Hey YouTube, quick update on the Unraid server project. Or should I say the super cheap 47 terabyte. Okay, I'm not gonna, I look like an idiot. Okay, um, so the update is I had to spend more money. I had to buy a proper uh, SAS controller because I want my smart status which I feel like most people would. So this thing is an LSI controller. It's pre-flashed in what's called IT mode. So it should just pass the disks on uh, right to Unraid without any sort of raid crap. Um, so we're gonna pop this in and then we're also gonna look at the performance and how this thing actually works. All right, let's give this a shot. We're just gonna take out our Quadro. Uh, if you watched part one, you'll probably have already cringed at this, and if not, you can start cringing now. You may continue cringing as I remove the raid card, which is not even mounted to anything. All right, so this is the HP card I stuck in there thinking that this would be an okay solution. It's not an okay solution. So let's pop this thing open. Uh, let's see what's the easiest way to do it. Use the bracket to uh, slice the bag. And here we go. This actually looks remarkably similar to the card that was in this server when I first started part one. You can see there's a little uh, tag on there, which I'd assume hopefully means that it was tested and working. I'm gonna pull that off, stick that over here on my stairs just in case I need it for something. And we're just gonna go ahead and plug in the SAS cables. Um, so there's zero and one. So I'm gonna make sure that I've got the left bank of drives plugged into zero. And so let's go like this. So this is left and then this is right. Okay. So we're going to stick that in there, just like so. Oh, look at that. Got a giant A and B on the back. Okay. Fun fact, I plan to put a 10 gig uh, card, Ethernet card in here too somewhere. So that'll be another video. I don't know how I'm going to make that fit, but when there's a will, there's a way. I got one slot left, so I got to use it. Put our quadro. Just shove it down, pull that back, and then it kind of sits just like so. Alright, let's put the lid back on. Fire it up. Alright, that's good news so far. Oh yeah, listen to those fans. Okay. Avago Technologies, interesting. So I think this is the raid bias. Let's see if I can get that. Oh yeah, you can kind of read that. Uh, let's go in just to see what it looks like. Okay, H200A, status enabled. Uh, enabled bias, SAS topology. Oh, okay, this is looking promising so far. There's all our hard drives. We might be onto something. Advanced device. Okay, I'm not going to go in and, into this because I don't want to break it. Um, I'm just going to say we should just uh, exit and reboot and boot into Unraid and see what happens. All right. I'm going to go upstairs and take a look. All right. I'm upstairs and I cut a whole lot out of this video because some tragedy happened. One of my used hard drives is dead. Um, I don't know how we didn't catch this on part one, but likely just because we weren't getting all the information from the RAID controller, or I should say through the RAID controller. So anyways, the drive failed smart and now will not format, so I pulled it from the system. Um, I've contacted the seller because they do actually uh, guarantee them for X amount of days. I don't remember how many off the top of my head. So we're gonna see if maybe we can get a 
replacement for that one, which would be great. A funny fact is I checked all the drives and every single drive was dated 2016, except for the one that failed, which was dated 2018. So I suspect it got mixed up in the piles of drives. I'm sure they process on a daily basis. And it was actually in fact dead and I wasn't supposed to receive it. I don't know, just a wild guess. So anyways, that's the update. Um, I'm just uh, installing some drivers. I'll, t I'll show you here. You can see we're on the fancy uh, reboot screen. Um, since it's a server, it takes forever to, to go through the bias and all that. So we're going to wait a little bit longer. Um, and we'll be back in a second to kind of go over how I've got it set up. Less one drive. Sad face. All right, a little bit of an update on the hard drive situation. I've got great news. The seller has agreed to send us a replacement drive. So for now, we're just going to run at 39 point. Well, actually, I'll tell you right now. I'll bring that up. Uh, we're going to run at 39.3 terabytes until our extra 8 terabyte drive comes in, and then we'll pop that sucker back in and hopefully have our full 47 terabytes. Um, so let's look at the configuration here. I'm not going to go into super detail on how I did this, uh, but I will link to the resources I used in the comments. So here's all of our drives, all seven of them. Um, you can see now I've got my temperature and smart reporting's working correctly, so that's all great. Super happy. It was worth the 40 bucks getting the proper controller. Um, we've got our cache drive in here, our 250 gig uh, Samsung Evo, um, and there's our boot drive. So. Everything's good here. You can see we're still rebuilding the uh, parity currently, which is going to be done in nine hours. It's 18% completed. Um, so basically, we're going to start by going into settings, and I'll show you the NVIDIA driver, which is available through the Community Applications Store. Um, you can see right now it does take a while to load because uh, it does its update, but uh, there's my card, my Quadro M2000 with its ID. Uh, current driver installed is 440.44, so that appears to be working. Um, and let's go head into our Docker, and I'll show you some of the config in here. So we'll switch to advanced, and uh, we're using the Linux server repo of Plex. Um, here's what you need to do. Again, not super detailed, just a quick overview. Under extra parameters, you're going to set runtime NVIDIA right there. Uh, we're going to scroll down um, down here. You are going to paste your GPU ID right into here, into NVIDIA Visible Devices. And then you've got to add uh, a special variable down here, or actually I should say uh, a, no, no, it is a variable. Um, so that's under here, add another path, port, variable, label, or device. And you're going to set the key to NVIDIA driver capabilities. Then you're going to save. And then this is going to pop up right here. Um, you find this, type all, lowercase, and then apply. One other thing I did is I enabled um, transcoding to use the RAM instead of the SSD. So again, that's add another path. And then essentially what you do is you're going to assign your forward slash transcode to the forward slash temp. So again, I'll link in the description on the resources I used to find out this information. Uh, pretty basic setup stuff. And that's, that's basically it. So let's actually test it with a whole bunch of clients and get a bunch of streams going at various qualities. We're going to go ahead and use a 15 megabit per second 1080p video file. This is modest hardware, so we're not gonna throw something too crazy at it. Uh, so let's go get that set up. Um, fun fact, we're actually gonna use part one of this video to test. So if you haven't seen that, go ahead and check it out here. It's a little bit long, and I really didn't know anything about Unrate at that point, so it's a little bit weird. But uh, yeah, if you are interested, check it out. And if you're on mobile and didn't see that, go into the comments. Um, other fun fact, if you're interested in uh, home automation at all, uh, you can go check out my video on my, there they are, my do-it-yourself Wi-Fi air conditioner, smart air conditioner conversion with Home Assistant and Node Red. Again, comments or here if I can make it work. Okay, let's go get it set up. Okay, I've got them all queued up, so we're gonna go hit play.
Okay, so I just ran around and took a look at all the streams, as you may have noticed. And currently we've got seven of them going um, strong. You can see the GPU usage is pretty heavy right now. CPU usage is just nothing, which is amazing. My old server, you'd start like three transcodes and the whole thing, all the fans would be going full speed and it would sound like a rocket taken off and of course everything became unresponsive on the server which is a huge reason I'm doing the GPU is that I don't want Plex to affect VMs and other performance so I'm hoping that because we're offloading it all to the GPU we won't have that problem. It says seven but I only see six and technically this is probably a test of six streams so um, I think this system, this setup is capable of more but it's one of those things where this is probably a sweet, a sweet number. It's not overloading everything, but it's also um, playing quite smoothly. So I do have one gigabit symmetrical internet now. So I don't really, a, a lot of stuff you can just play without just original quality and it's fine. Um, and because of that fact, the transcoding hasn't been as big of a problem for me, which is why I wasn't too concerned about using an M2000 versus, let's say, a P2000. Um, but anyways, I'm pretty happy with the results so far. Okay, so it's been about four days since we just did that test. And now I can give you a more realistic update on where we're at as far as setup and all that goes. So um, let's just jump right into it. Let's take a look here on the screen. So you can see I've transferred over about 14.4 terabytes of data. Uh, you'll also notice I added a second SSD I found. Um, it's not necessary, but I just wanted some redundance on my cache, especially considering my, my 850 was showing uh, some smart errors. So, and that hasn't been resolved either. I tried switching cables, but to no avail, we still have our little CRC error count line here. Uh, no big deal for now. Um, so jumping back at, to the drives, this is kind of a, a sore spot now, is getting the used drives may have not been the best option. Um, basically, I've got, I'm, I'm just in the smart logs, I'm getting some, some read errors, delayed read errors, so let's uh, take a look. So here's disk 2. Um, this one was actually one of the ones having more than the others. So there they are. Um, and let's just, I'll jump into another one. Let's go to the, one of the parity drives. Less, so this one's got, got some write errors and verify errors. Anyways, they all got errors. So, so far overall the system feels very stable. I've had no problems accessing and writing data. Obviously there's risk of potential corruption if, if these hard drives are on their way out. So overall, yes, you can build a server, including drives, for basically under $1,300, but should you? Probably not. Anyways, but for now, we're just going to roll with this. I'm not saving any sensitive data on this. Um, all my VMs and uh, Dockers are running off the SSDs. This is basically media, which I'd rather not lose, but at the end of the day, if something gets corrupted, I it's not the worst case scenario. Uh, storing photos and stuff that can't be lost, I don't think I would use this for that. Um, one of the other issues I was having with the SAS drives, well actually there's two more, um, right off the bat I was getting terrible write performance when transferring this data and after a little bit of research I found out that all these drives did not have their internal write caches enabled. So if you look at the uh, terminal here, you can see this command I ran um, on drive SDD, which would be disk 5. Um, WCE says 1. So if you have SAS drives and you're getting crappy write performance, well, open up your, your terminal and punch in this command. And if this does not say 1, run this command on that disk, and it'll basically turn it on. I saw over double the write speed after that. Um, the other issue I had was... I had automatic spin down basically turned on, which actually that's probably not the actual technical term. Um, 
default spin down delay was turned on, and I noticed that my log was getting spammed with errors. Turns out the kernel used in Unraid, in my, as, as far as I know, all the versions right now just simply do not support um, spinning down SAS drives. It's just a, uh, a limitation that hopefully will be resolved in future versions, but at this point, I cannot spin them down, which, aside from the fact that they could be dying, isn't really the end of the world because they're designed to be on 24-7 anyways, but I would rather spin them down to save power, etc. So right now, they're all staying spun up 24-7. So those are kind of the, the issues I ran into, um, but overall, I'm extremely happy with Unraid and what it can do. I've had to get into some advanced config with my dockers and stuff like that. Um, but generally speaking, almost anyone can walk up to this and set it up without knowing anything about it, which is very impressive um, for this type of software. Uh, overall, the, the, the RAID performance is not really up to what you'd get with ZFS with FreeNAS, in my opinion, because that's what I've used in the past, as well as my old server was actually running Windows storage pools which had amazing performance, surprisingly, but for, well, for the age of the hardware and all that. Um, but it's good enough for me, and with uh, the few settings I tweaked, I was able to saturate my gigabit connection writing to the disks, and I was able to, to maintain that as well for extended periods. So, and that's not going through the cache, that's writing directly to the array. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, last thing I'm gonna mention before I wrap this video up is um, it's not really related to Plex or the hard drives, but more of just me being a geek, is I've gone ahead and installed Telegraph and um, a few other dockers which allow me to dump a whole bunch of data into my um, InfluxDB, which is set up with Home Assistant. So I found this great template online, um, which I will link to in the video description. And uh, I've got it now connected to my server, and you can see the amount of specs and, uh, not specs, but data I get from this, real-time data is, is amazing. Um, I modified this template to include my GPU, which you can see is not doing much in there right now. Um, and I've got all of my, my data here, so my disks, you can see how much I've ridden to the array in the last month, year. I just, I, I really like the way this is laid out. It gives you a lot of information about what's going on. Um, I haven't set up my UPS yet. I do have a APC Smart UPS um, 3000. I just need to update the firmware on it and then hopefully I can get this populated as well. Um, but yeah, so I'm, that's kind of what I'm looking at for, for monitoring. And uh, that's about it. Please, if you have any questions whatsoever, um, send me a message or, or post in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. Um, obviously, every setup has its own challenges and I faced quite a few and I've managed to overcome all of them aside from the hard drives themselves which again we'll we'll see what time does but yeah overall um, I'm I'm pleased with with Unraid and its capabilities so thanks for watching this video um, I will I do intend to post a, a follow-up again once this has been running for maybe say six months let you know if the hard drive survived or not um, and, uh, yeah, please, uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and want to see more. All right. Have a good one.